Our first uh, panel, obviously, is we have um, uh, Mr. Lawrence Wilson. Mr. Wilson is currently the director of the Chronic Care Policy Group in the CMS Center for Medicare Management. As the director, he is responsible for Medicare policy on a broad range of fee-for-service health care benefits. He is also responsible for administrating the agency's process for coding of drugs, devices, and other items and services. Mr. Wilson has worked for CMS since 1988. Mr. Wilson, thank you for, uh, for being here today, and we look forward to hearing your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Chairman Schuler, Ranking Member Lickenmeyer. I'm pleased to be here today to discuss the Durable Medical Equipment, Prosthetics, Orthotics, and Supplies Competitive Bidding Program. This important initiative required under the Medicare Modernization Act of 2003 has three key components, quality standards and accreditation, financial standards, and competitive bidding. Together, these will help reduce beneficiary out-of-pocket costs, improve the accuracy of Medicare's payments, help combat fraud, and ensure beneficiary access to high-quality items and services. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, implemented the program on July 1, 2008 in 10 metropolitan areas around the country. After two weeks of operation, the program was delayed by the Medicare Improvements for Patients and Providers Act of 2008, or MIPA. CMS is now preparing to move forward with that program in 2009, as the law requires, and we look forward to incorporating the improvements mandated by MIPA, as well as others being planned by CMS, to ensure a smooth transition to the new program for both beneficiaries and suppliers. As the 2008 implementation showed, the accreditation program and use of financial standards provides important safeguards for beneficiaries and the Medicare program. These safeguards support good quality and customer service, act to weed out illegitimate suppliers, and ensure a level play playing field for suppliers competing for contracts under the program. I would note that with the support of suppliers, CMS will be implementing the quality standards and accreditation process on a national basis this year. CMS conducted a wide variety of activities to involve stakeholders in the development of these standards. Some, such as special focus groups, were targeted specifically to small suppliers. CMS has also adopted a number of approaches to ensure small suppliers have the opportunity to be considered for participation in the competitive bidding program. First, CMS worked in collaboration with the Small Business Administration to develop new, more representative definition of small suppliers. CMS then designed policies linked to this definition to help small suppliers. For example, our final regulations allow small suppliers to band together in networks in order to meet certain program requirements. The regulation also employs a formula to ensure that multiple contract suppliers are selected for each product category in an area. More importantly, the regulation establishes a special 30% target for small suppliers in the program. CMS was pleased that of the 335 contract suppliers selected in 2008, 64% met this definition of small supplier. Our 2008 experience demonstrated that competitive bidding has the potential to bring value to Medicare, beneficiaries, and taxpayers. In fact, average savings across the 10 metropolitan areas was 26%. As a specific example, in Pittsburgh, the price of a standard wheelchair dropped 32 percent under this program. That savings would have gone directly to Medicare, the taxpayers, and to beneficiaries in terms of lower coinsurance. While this program offers real benefits, we do understand that it will be difficult for some suppliers because the law requires that there be both winning and losing bidders, and the new system represents a significant change in how suppliers op operate under Medicare. We will continue to work closely with suppliers, manufacturers, beneficiaries, and others to make improvements in the program as we move forward. For example, MIPA requires a number of important changes to the program. Just a few of these include a document review process to assist providers or suppliers in completing their bids, an exemption to the competitive bidding program for certain items provided by hospitals, exemption from the program for rural areas and, and for small metropolitan areas in future rounds of bidding. That's beyond this next first round. Establishment of a competitive bidding program ombudsman to address supplier and beneficiary concerns. Last month, CMS issued an interim final rule with comment period to implement these and other provisions of MIPA. Yesterday, CMS issued a notice seeking comment on a contemplated 60-day delay in the effective date of that rule. 
CMS itself is also considering additional improvements to the program. These improve an improved online bidding system, streamlined financial documentation requirements, earlier education for suppliers um, on the bidding process, and many other, many other features that we intend to improve. We have also established a new membership of our Program Advisory and Oversight Committee to advise CMS as it implements the program. This group is equipped to advise CMS on a broad range of issues and has experience with on-the-ground operational issues, including the critical interaction between beneficiaries and suppliers. In conclusion, beneficiaries deserve quality items and services at a lower price from reliable suppliers. CMS is committed to the successful implementation of this program in order to deliver that. Once decisions are made about the timing of implementation, CMS will notify the public and begin to educate suppliers and beneficiaries about the program. I very much appreciate your time and the invitation to testify before you today and would be very happy to take questions.